Right, thanks, Ross. Um, well, we obviously had to come inside today uh, with, with the crazy weather situation. Hopefully everyone in this area is, is okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, today was a what we call situational day. Uh, it used to be a day that was live, but, but had, to, had to be good uh, this year. With a couple of live periods, uh, you know, at the end. But a lot of situational football. We've been going for a couple of weeks now. And uh, you know, really trying to expose these guys and the coaches, uh, so that you know we, we think situationally, and the same thing for the team. So, uh, some first down emphasis, first down play, second down, second down play, third down, then all third down. Uh, we did some, we did some coming out off the goal line. Uh, we did, we did a third and three, two down territory. Got to, got to win, try to win the game. Defense got to stop. It's four down territory all the way. Uh, so that was a good situation for us. Uh, we got, we got you know, three, three uh, racks of two minutes uh, with a touchdown to win it type of situation. We did some last plays. So, so a lot of situational work today. And, uh, you know, it was really good for us because, again, uh, you don't want to wait till you get into those situations in games and, and, and see some of these mistakes that, that we had today. So good to get some of that stuff exposed so that we can teach and uh, and get better from it. And I don't have any doubt our, our guys will, will do just like – just do, do just that. But, you know, some critical mistakes today, just, just like, you know, the, you know uh, the defense, you know, offense needs a touchdown to win it, end of the game, DB makes an interception and, you know, just takes off run instead of getting down. So, so just situational stuff uh, that we've got to teach from. And, again, some last plays – uh, you know, what to expect in certain field zones, uh, whether it be last play from the 30 to 15 to 5, et cetera. Uh, so I, I, I'm really pleased with the amount of teaching we were able to get done today and the amount of work. Uh, but, uh, you know, tomorrow uh, we start school. Uh, so it's been, a, it's been a good camp. Uh, you know, everybody's at that point in camp now where I think everybody's excited for school to start tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we pretty much have had these guys. When you have camp, you have no rules from a time standpoint. You can have them all day and night. And uh, we, we take full advantage of that, uh, you know, as we prepare for the whole season. And so now we, we get into school and, 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 the, and the clock starts and, and our, our constraints kick in as far as how long we can have these guys on a daily basis. So uh, but I feel good about all the work that we've got done. Uh, we've got a lot of evaluate still to do between now and next week. And then we gotta we gotta start honing in and and, uh, and getting ready for for uh, opponent play. So uh, you know tomorrow will be a uh, a lighter day uh, in, in best, and then Thursday will be our last full live scrimmage, and then uh, let these guys rest a little bit. Come back Friday and Saturday. Come back in here Sunday, and, uh, and get back at it. So a lot of work to do, but I feel good about. Uh, what these guys have accomplished these last couple of weeks. Hey, Coach hey, Trevor from Steve David Hood. Are you starting to see some clarity along that offensive line, especially at, at center, or is that still kind of a work in progress? Well, it's still a work in progress. Uh, you know, I think all of them have done some good things. The biggest thing is consistency. Uh, I think all of them physically can get the job done, and I, I think all three mentally can get the job done, but, but – consistency with our snaps uh that's that's you know that's the area we've got to we've got to make some strides in not not that's the i mean you got to be 100 percent 99.99999 percent uh you know when it comes to the cq exchange so uh that's that's an area that i think we got to clean up uh, as we as we you know really hone in coming out of camp here but uh, all those guys have done a good job. Trent Howard has done a really good job. I'm really pleased with him. He's he's probably the most consistent uh, when it comes to just you know just the CQ exchange part. And uh, but I think mentally and physically we got some guys that can get the job done. But again, just still need a little more consistency there. Hey, Coach Trevor from CUTigers.com. Um, what were some of the things that jumped out to you watching the film of uh, Saturday's scrimmage? And with only two scrimmages this year. How much more important does that make Thursday uh, for your guys to execute and clean up some of those penalties and things offensively? 
Well, I mean, it's important, but but listen, every day is important. I mean, when you're in camp, I mean, it's it's not just the scrimmages. I mean, you got to look at the totality of camp. Uh, you know, sometimes a guy can have a bad day, but he got a great camp. Uh, or somebody somebody can uh, you know have a bad camp and has a great scrimmage. You know, so I think you got to weigh all that stuff uh, together. But it's important. I mean, every single day that we come out here, it's it's, it's critically important. But I think the biggest thing. Saturday was was just it's probably the best first scrimmage defensively that I've been a part of here. I mean, I you know just absolutely uh, no mistakes from a beating yourself standpoint. No penalties. Um, I mean, just didn't give up big plays. Got stops in the red zone. I mean, they they re- no drop off. I mean, I just was very pleased with how crisp they played. And then offensively, first group. Started out pretty good, moved the ball well, just kind of stalled out, had to settle for some field goals. Um, but then as the day wore on, I thought the energy of the defense, they started getting some pressure. And, you know, we kind of made made some mistakes. But, uh, you know, I think we had 10 or 11 penalties on offense. So we had CQ exchange issues, had a couple of drops. We got running backs, receivers jumping off sides. And, and those are things you, you, you can't – you just can't do. It's hard enough to move the ball, and now when you're – Having kind of self-inflicted uh, issues, that's that's not good. So today was much better uh, from that standpoint. Much better. Uh, didn't have near as many penalties offensively. Uh, we did have a couple of tip picks uh, that that was disappointing. But um, defensively, I thought you know they had another solid day. We did we did have a couple of boneheaded mistakes. We did we did have a, about four penalties on defense today. Uh, but uh, it was a little more competitive. Uh, I thought Saturday the defense just just won the day uh, from top to bottom. And then again today, a little more competitive. But I would still say the defense you know, came out with, with the edge, won the two minute drill, and uh, uh, you know won the third down drill as well. So uh, still got some work to do. But I tell you, it's a, it's a blessing to be able to have the type of people that we got on this field to, to make each other better. Yeah, but this yeah, is. Bro, this is- you, uh, Sorry. Can you give us an injury update on the offensive side? I guess specifically Pennington, John Williams, uh, Joseph Ngata, and maybe whoever else is not available. Yeah, not available. I'm not getting not getting any specifics because we just got a bunch of guys banged up. You know, uh, I mean Joe's still out. Uh, hopefully, it's not a long term thing. He's just he's, you know, battling a hamstring, and, and, uh, but I think I think everything that we're dealing with. Uh, John Williams is probably the one that's maybe a little more uh, longer term. Uh, he'll be back at some point, but he's probably a little more. The rest of the guys, you know, they're all kind of day to day. You know, it's been a long two weeks of camp, a lot of banging, and you know, guys just get to that point where it's something. It's a toenail. It's a, it's falling off. It's a, uh, a sore shoulder. It's uh, you know whatever. Uh, we've, we've got a little bit of everything. Uh, but, you know, probably the only one right now that, that I'm uh, concerned about is John. He's probably more long-term. Yeah, bro, this is Matt. Um, when when Bacor slides in at center, who do you all go with at left guard? And, and is there competition there if Bacor were to play center? Oh, absolutely. There's competition everywhere. Uh, you know, we've been – you know, we've, we've been cross-training guys. There were Marcus Tate's a guy that's been working left tackle and, and guard. He's worked with the ones, the twos. You know, T.O.'s another guy. Rayburn has played guard. Trotter's played guard. I mean, we, we've got all kind of combinations. The good news is, is we got more guys that can play, uh, you know, for us. So, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. You know, we're, we're, we're still, like I said, a work in progress uh, with a couple of – two and a half weeks here before our first game. Uh, but uh, – but, but I think we got a lot more guys that can go in and, and, and get the job done for us than we had this time last year. Dabo, this is Gene in Charleston. How would you assess your running back room right now relative to where you wanted it to be? And, and how much of a luxury is it to have, you know, Brent Venables throwing stuff at him to help them pick up nuances of blitz protection and stuff like that? Our running back room is – is really good. I love those guys. Uh, I think we got a great group. You know, we got a couple, you know, true freshmen in Shipley and Maffa that are, that are going to be great players. And 
every single day is a is a learning experience for them. Kobe is, you know, he, he doesn't he's a true sophomore. He doesn't really carry himself that way. He kind of carries himself as a as a more you know, seasoned veteran. That's kind of how he goes about his business. Uh, Lynn Jay's got a ton of experience around here. We all know what what he can do. Uh, Mikey Dukes uh, just got a little later start to camp than the rest of the guys, so he, he was not in pads today. He's still in his acclimatization period. Uh, but uh, Mikey's a guy that, you know, just has kind of missed out on some early opportunity, but we'll get him back rolling. And uh, Rencher is a you know, savvy veteran as well. So we got a we got a really good room. I mean, I, I'm confident in all those guys, and I think we're going to be able to you know have some explosiveness and some guys that can do some things uh, in the passing game and and, um, and so forth. But uh, yeah, as I said, it's a blessing when when and not just for the defense. It's a, it's a blessing for our defense to have you know the type of offensive personnel that they see every day. Uh, I mean. You're not going to see a better offensive lineman in the country than Jordan McFadden. No way. Uh, I mean, and, and you know, to, and Parks is not far off. And so for our ends to have to go against those type of players and for our backers and our DBs, secondary guys, to have to match up against the skill, the tight ends, the backs, um, you know, it's a challenge for our defense because because there's a lot going on. Uh, and then the same thing, vice versa, man. Uh, it's baptism by fire. Uh, when, when you come on this practice field, because I mean, you're going to see every front, every coverage, every blitz. Uh, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't tiptoe through the installation uh, from a defensive standpoint. Um, and, uh, you know, that, but in the, in the end, you know, that's really good when you start game plan when you really start to pare things down. Um, you know, every year, that's one of the things I always see is the guys, you know, they, they just, they've been exposed to so much on the practice field it helps us on game day for both sides. And that's one of the reasons I think we've been so successful around here for a long time is there's not many teams in the country that can, that can uh, compete against each other in practice like we can, you know, and and to be honest with you, that's, that's more important than anything. Uh, If you go to the national championship, that's 15 total days uh, out of 365. That's it. So the other 350, it's that's really what it's all about and so that's who you're training with who you're competing against on the practice field uh every single day and and, you know i think that we're very fortunate because uh you know we get exposed on this practice field as coaches we get exposed as players and uh and it makes us better for for game day Hey, Davo. Davo. Anna with 24 7. Um, what kind of camp has Trenton Simpson had? Really good. Uh, he's, a, he's a baller. He's a great player. He's still a young player uh, and obviously made some great strides for us last year. But he's, he's, uh, I think he's had a very good camp. I mean, you just notice him all the time. I mean, he's still got some details that you'd like, you'd like to see him be a little more detailed in certain areas. But he's one of those guys that covers up mistakes. Uh, just a just a tremendous young prospect that's that's going to just keep getting better. Dabo is mad again. As camp winds down, what do you feel like you've learned about your team, and do you have any question marks still that you're hoping to get answered here over the next few weeks before the season starts? Well, I think the biggest thing is 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 they're together. Uh, you know, this is a team that likes each other, and uh, and they'll compete. You know, they'll compete. Uh, you know, they, 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 they practiced physical, uh, they're, they're, I think a focus team. And, uh, you know, those are things that excited me. We're talented. I think we all know that, uh, but having the right leadership, having the right focus, having the right commitment, um, uh, those are things that, that, you know, the right attitude, uh, and the right character. And I think this team has, you know, all those intangibles, uh, that we're going to need to, have the type of season we want to have. Hey, hey, Dabo, you said before camp that you guys were right there at that 85% threshold for vaccinations. Have you guys hit that or exceeded that at this point? Yeah, we're in a good spot. In fact, we got, I think we got our, we got a couple guys got to get their second shots on Thursday, but you know, we're in a, we're in a great place staff and, and player wise. And, and uh, you know, we're not quite a hundred percent, but we're, we're in a good place. 
Hey, Coach, it's David again. Have you seen what you wanted to see out of DJ like over the last week or so and, and, and kind of him taking control and command of the offense and being the leader that you want him to be? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's had a good camp. And, uh, you know, that's, again, one of the reasons that we try to script practice the way we do is to, is to really challenge the quarterback because he's got to manage the game. And, uh, you know, it's not fair to expect him to do certain things if you don't expose him to those things in practice. And so we've, we've, we've got a good plan as far as how we've gone about our installation and, and, and the scripting of practice situationally, et cetera. Uh, but he's just – he's a great leader. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's – everybody's got confidence in him. He makes others around him better. Uh he, he loves it. He loves to compete. He loves to prepare. And uh, obviously, he's got the great skills to go with it. So he's had a good camp, and, and uh, but he's, you know, like everybody else, uh, grinding every single day to get better. Debo Brad from, Brad from Clemson SI and WCCP. Uh, when will you turn your attention to Georgia and kind of go full into that prep? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll start a little bit of opponent prep. On, on Monday, Tuesday, uh, you know, still working from Clemson as well. And then, uh, and then Wednesday will be a, a staff day for us. Uh, and then, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, will be all game prep. Uh, and then, and then obviously you got your game week. So, uh, obviously we've done a lot of work all summer. Uh, so it's not like we just, you know, wait and start. We've done a lot of staff work. But from a team standpoint, you know, you're going through camp, you know, it's about getting ready for your season, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, we'll start uh, uh, paring it down and honing in, person, evaluating personnel and those type of things. And, and again, trying to just teach uh, everything that we need to teach. But, you know, we'll, we'll have some opponent prep Monday and Tuesday, but also some Clemson work. And then, uh, you know, as of next Thursday, it'll be all, all game prep at that point. We'll take two or three more for coach. Coach, uh, now Dabo, that you have a uh, now that you have Ross back, uh, is the plan still to use him on on punt returns along with uh, Shipley and, and Dixon and Stellato and uh, and and those other guys that you've been working? Yeah, we, we we'll use we'll use we'll use him anywhere, uh, you know, wherever wherever we need him. You know, we're not afraid to use him. Yeah, but um, if you had to, if you play today. Do you know who your starting corners would be? And I guess your, your nickel as well? Uh, you know, if we played today, uh, you know, I think Mario and Booth would, would probably run out there first, but all those guys are going to play. Uh, they've had a good camp. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm confident in, in, in all six of those corners. Those guys have, have worked their tails off, and you'll see them all play. Um, and uh, Malcolm probably the first guy you know, in there at nickel. But, again, we got a long way to go between now and in and, uh, games. Um, so, a lot of practices, a lot of, a lot of stuff. But, um, you know, those guys, those guys have, have had good camps for us. Dabo, wh why do you think college football has become this sport that's obviously so dominated through the air, whether it's an elite quarterback? You saw it last year with Devonta Smith. Why do you think the game has kind of turned this way? High school football, you know, high school football changed everything. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, with all the year-round sports that you have nowadays, it used to not be that way. You, you know, now you got year-round baseball, year-round basketball, year-round lacrosse, soccer, you name it. And, and uh, I think high school coaches, uh, you know, in order to get the kids to play, they, they nobody wanted to go run out there and get an eye formation uh, which is what I've played in and coached in for a long time or run the option or so forth. Everybody wants to put the ball in the air and, and you know, you've got seven on sevens all over the, you know, uh, country. And uh, I think that's what's changed it and, you know, became a little bit more of a space game. Uh, and you've seen that because that's your recruiting base. And so you've seen the colleges change and, and then the NFL's recruiting base is the colleges. So, um, so you see the same thing at the next level because I think you, you know, you're going to play to the strengths that you have and, uh, with, the, with all the again, year round seven on seven and so forth and the development of quarterbacks uh, 
and all this skill, that's just that's just you know, changed everything.